Unity is an extremely powerful game development tool, as it allows anyone, regardless of their experience or background, to learn how to make and release a game using the same technology and tools that larger developers use for free. However, Unity isn't technically a free program. It's a paid program with a free plan, Unity Personal, meaning that it's a commercial product with a license agreement that's simply provided to you for free. While Unity's paid plans, Unity Plus, Unity Pro, and Unity Enterprise, unlock additional features at a cost. But will you ever need Unity's paid features? The short answer is no. It's entirely possible to earn a living making and selling games using Unity Personal. But while Unity Personal is almost always the best place to start, if your projects become very successful, you will at some point have to upgrade to a paid plan such as Unity Plus or Unity Pro. In this video, you'll learn some of the basic differences between the Unity plans, how they work and when you might want or need to upgrade. So how does it all work? From a technical standpoint, Unity Personal generally works in exactly the same way as Unity's paid subscription tiers. Meaning that if you make a game with Unity Personal, there's no reason why it won't play, sound or look exactly as good as a game that's made with a professional tier of Unity. So why would you ever need to upgrade? Generally speaking, there are two reasons why you might want to upgrade from Unity Personal to a paid plan such as Unity Plus or Unity Pro. One, because you want or need the additional features that come with a paid plan, or two, because you have to, because the amount of money you're earning means that you're no longer eligible to use Unity's free personal plan. This is because Unity's subscription plans work on the basis of tier eligibility, where you're only allowed to use a particular version of Unity if you're eligible for that tier. So for example, you can only use Unity Personal if your Unity-related revenue is less than $100,000 in the last 12 months, or if you're using Unity Plus, less than $200,000, while Unity Pro or Unity Enterprise have no earning limits. Put simply, this means that the amount of money you earn from Unity affects which version of it you're allowed to use, meaning that if you make a game with Unity and that game is very profitable, you'll need to pay for Unity Plus or Pro. So does this mean that you're paying royalties to Unity on the games that you make? Technically, no. Unity is royalty free, meaning that you completely own what you make with it and you don't need to pay any additional fees to them even if your game is earning you money. While your use of the Unity editor is provided by a license, which depending on your status and your revenue, you may need to pay for. However, you do not need to maintain a Unity subscription simply because you've created a profitable game using Unity. For example, if you create a game using Unity Personal and you release it and that game earns you more than $100,000 a year, there's no obligation for you to then purchase a Unity Plus or Unity Pro subscription just because the game you made with Unity is now earning you money. After all, that would be a royalty and Unity is royalty free. But if you want to keep using Unity, and chances are you will, either to update your game or to make another one, you'll need to make sure that you have an eligible license to use the Unity software, which, depending on how much you're now earning, you may need to pay for. So while Unity does not take any royalties, and while you don't need to pay money to Unity when you're not using their software, if you do want to use the Unity editor and your earnings mean that you can't use Unity Personal, you'll need to purchase a license to do it. But how do the rules work? Who can use Unity for free? If your Unity-related revenue or funding is less than $100,000 for the last year, then generally speaking, you can use Unity for free. But what does Unity consider to be Unity-related income? When deciding if you're eligible to use Unity Personal, the method of calculating your revenue is based on what you are and who you're working for. For example, if you're a legal entity, such as a company, all of your revenue is taken into consideration when calculating your tier eligibility whether it's related to Unity or not. However, if you're an individual who earns a living from a full-time job, for example, but who's making games on the side, it's just the money you make from using Unity that's taken into account, which might be a little or it might be a lot, but you don't have to include any non-Unity work when working out if you're eligible to use Unity Personal, just the money that you earn from using Unity. 
That is, unless you're using Unity to work for someone else. If you're working as a freelancer and are using Unity to provide services to a client, then it's their revenue, not yours, that matters when working out if you're tier eligible for Unity Personal. For example, if a company that's earning more than $100,000 pays you to work on their project, you won't be allowed to use Unity Personal for that work. This is due to the fact that different license tiers cannot be used by a single entity or for the benefit of a single entity, such as working on someone else's project as a contributor. Most people, however, will be tier eligible for Unity Personal, meaning that they'll be able to use Unity for free. And because it offers the same level of features as Unity Plus and Unity Pro, if you're able to use Unity Personal, then you should, especially if you're just getting started. After all, game development can take a long time, particularly if you're learning how to make your first game, and it simply doesn't make sense to use a paid Unity plan until you need to, which may be a while since many of the benefits of Unity Plus and Unity Pro simply won't apply until it's time to release your game. In fact, even if you've already released a game, and even if you're earning good money with Unity, the free personal version might still be all you ever need. So should you ever consider buying Unity Plus or Unity Pro? In my opinion, everyone that can use Unity Personal should. And the only time you should consider upgrading is when you're getting closer to the release of your game, which is when you might typically want or need some of the additional features that a paid plan can offer, at which point you might want to consider making the jump from Unity Personal to Unity Plus. Unity Plus is Unity's mid-tier subscription option, and for many developers, has historically been a sweet spot between the free Unity Personal plan and the top tier Unity Pro subscription. Right now, Unity Plus costs $40 a month, or you can pay annually up front for $399, the equivalent of around $33 a month. But why would you get Unity Plus? The first reason you might need to upgrade is tier eligibility, as Unity Plus raises the threshold of your Unity related revenue from $100,000 to 200,000. However, while you may need to upgrade because you're earning more money, buying Unity Plus also unlocks additional features. For example, Unity Plus allows you to further customize or disable your game's splash screen. While it's already possible to display your own logo or a series of logos alongside the Made with Unity logo, it's only possible to remove it completely with a Unity Plus subscription or higher. Unity Plus also increases the number of collaboration integrations you're able to use with your Unity project, allowing you to connect with multiple collaborative tools such as Trello, Discord or Slack, compared to Unity Personal's limit of one connected platform. This could be useful if, for example, you want to keep your cloud build notifications and your crash reports separate, particularly since Unity Plus also significantly increases the number of crash and exception reports you're able to receive in Cloud Diagnostics. Cloud Diagnostics allows you to track what's happening when your game goes wrong, allowing you to monitor and analyze exception reports and crashes. This is not to be confused with analytics, which is a feature of Unity Gaming Services that helps you understand how a player is playing your game. Cloud Diagnostics is already enabled in Unity Personal, but only a limited number of crash and user reports are available, which could be a problem if you're trying to work through your game's early issues particularly if your player count spikes at launch, as it may do. Unity Plus significantly raises this limit, allowing you to track user reports, errors, and full-blown crashes from the Cloud Diagnostics dashboard. But when, if ever, will you need all of this? Buying Unity Plus can make a lot of sense as you get closer to the release of your first game. This is mainly because of the significantly higher level of diagnostics it supports, which could be useful for making sure that your game's initial release goes well and avoiding early negative reviews. If you're thinking about getting Unity Plus at all, it could be a good investment for your game's first year, since it allows you to keep a close eye on the performance of your game during its initial release, and as a bonus, allows you to remove the splash screen too, if that's something that's important to you. But while it is possible to downgrade your Unity license from Plus back to Personal, that is, so long as you're still tier eligible for Personal, Projects created with the Unity Plus or Pro license will reportedly remain tied to that tier, meaning that you won't be able to open them using a personal license. This means that while it's possible to upgrade projects to a higher tier of Unity license, it's generally not possible to go back, at least not on a per project basis. 
However, while it can be tricky to go down from plus to personal, depending on the platforms you want to release your game on, the only way forward might actually be up to Unity Pro. Unity Pro is the professional tier of Unity's product lineup. It removes all revenue limits, unlocks a couple of specific technical features, namely free access to Unity Mars and Havoc Physics as an option in ECS projects, and offers improved customer service support from Unity themselves in the shape of priority access to Unity's customer service stuff. However, as valuable as that might be, typically there's one big reason why you might want to get Unity Pro. Unity Pro, unlike Unity Plus and Unity Personal, allows you to create and deploy to closed platforms, such as Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo consoles. Which means that if you want to release your Unity game on Switch or any other closed platform, you're going to need a Unity Pro license to do it, which at more than $2,000 a year could be expensive. But while you do need a Unity Pro license to release a game on consoles, you might not actually have to pay for it yourself. Instead, your intended release platform may be able to provide you with a preferred platform key, giving you access to Unity Pro essentially for free. So how does that work? A preferred platform key is a license for Unity Pro that's provided by a platform holder, such as Sony or Nintendo, that will enable you to develop a game for their platform using Unity Pro, but without having to pay for it yourself. Reportedly, Sony and Nintendo both provide Unity Pro licenses as part of their development programs, while Microsoft, for the moment at least, doesn't. Which means that if you're developing an Xbox title, you may need to purchase Unity Pro yourself in order to release it. However, in any case, it's not possible to release a game on a closed platform using Unity or anything else without becoming a part of that platform's development program. As a result, if you intend to develop for any console using Unity, the first step is typically always to apply to the development program of the platform that you're interested in first. Meaning that if you're a beginner or someone who's in the middle of their game's development, there's probably no reason for you to get Unity Pro anytime soon. Instead, just keep making your game with whatever version of Unity you're allowed to use and worry about Pro later, even if you're ultimately planning to release on consoles, since your participation in a development program may mean that you don't need to pay for Unity Pro yourself anyway. So which version of Unity should you be using? If you're a beginner, or even if you're an experienced developer who makes games for a living, chances are Unity Personal, as long as you're allowed to use it, is the best option for you. It's fully featured and, from a technical standpoint, can do just about anything that Unity Plus and Unity Pro can do and allows you to make good money from the games you make. Generally, the best time to consider upgrading to Unity Plus is when you have to, either because you're making too much money from your games or because the amount of players that you have means that Unity Plus's extra features, such as increased cloud diagnostics, are now going to be really important to you. And while you will need Unity Pro to release your game on consoles, unless your revenue means that you need to upgrade, it's probably going to be a good idea to apply to your chosen development program first and hold off upgrading until you absolutely have to. This is in part because Unity projects are tied to the tier of license that they were created with meaning that you can only open a project if you hold the same license that it was created with or higher. Go too early and you have to maintain a level of license you don't really need just to keep working with your projects. So when's the right time, if ever, to upgrade? Generally speaking, Unity's paid subscriptions, while they can be expensive, tend to scale with success. As you earn more money from the games you make, you'll need to pay for a Unity license to keep using it. But at that point, because Unity's revenue thresholds are quite high, chances are you'll be able to afford the cost of a paid subscription more easily anyway. In the meantime though, Unity Personal, so long as you're eligible, and you probably are, is usually always the best place to start. The information in this video, to the best of my knowledge, was accurate at the time of release. However, for official, up-to-date information on Unity's pricing plans, a list of sources that we used to make this video, and where you can apply for a console development program yourself, see the links in the video description. Now I want to hear from you. Are you using Unity Personal, Unity Plus, or Unity Pro? What's your experience with Unity's paid platforms? And what's your best advice for someone who's considering paying for a Unity subscription? Whatever it is, let me know by leaving a comment, like this video if you found it helpful, and get subscribed for more videos from me. I'll see you next time. Thank you.